Hey everybody, Peter Zion coming to you from Washington, D.C. That's Mellon Auditorium behind me. Uh, today we're going to talk about an upcoming trip that Joe Biden has to Angola. Now, during the Cold War, the United States and Angola were definitely on opposite sides. Uh, there was a civil war there that the Soviets and the Cubans and later the Chinese were supporting on one side. We were supporting on the... Oh, hello, that's a big-ass squirrel that seems to think that I have food for it. Huh. Anyway, during that time, so the Americans were on one side, the Soviets were on the other side, and American oil companies were helping the Soviet-backed government generate oil that was then sold to Europe and, you know, Cold War, weird stuff. Uh, anyway, bottom line is that uh, the Cold War is long since over. The Americans are saying bygones, and the Angolans are a little curious as to the details, but they're open to some sort of a deal. Uh, it's not that Angola is all that important to the United States for its own sake. I mean, yes, they produce one and a half to two million barrels of crude a day, but the U.S. is the world's largest refined product exporter now and the world's largest crude producer. So it's not like we need it for us or even for our allies anymore. Uh, the issue has to do with mining. Uh, Africa is kind of the great frontier for large scale mining, particularly on a belt of countries going from Congo south. Uh, this is the old Cecil Rhodes route. Cecil Rhodes is the guy who basically founded modern uh, South Africa. And from the Copper Belt in southern Congo, there's a series of collection railroads that link together and form a spine going down Zambia, Zimbabwe, uh, Botswana, and ultimately reaching the better ports uh, in South Africa. Well, there's something called the Benguila Roadway or the Lobito Corridor that cuts across Angola to the Atlantic that intersects this line. And ever since uh, apartheid ended in South Africa, the government has become increasingly dysfunctional. And the maintenance on the main spine railway has steadily degraded to the point that it's pretty rough in a lot of places. So the idea the United States has is if we can rehabilitate the Lobito Corridor and rebuild the Benguela Railway, which dates back to the Portuguese occupation a century ago, wow. Oh, then there's another route for this stuff to get out, and it would be going to the Atlantic instead of the Indian Ocean Basin, and that's closer to the United States and Europe as opposed to China. So it's become a bit of a tug of war that the Angolans are encouraging because everybody's spending infrastructure money in their country. And the people who won the Civil War, the pro-Soviets, are a minority. So now we have the group that the United States used to support, it, which is uh, closer to the majority, that's kind of an oppressed population. So once again, uh, there's all kinds of weird geopolitics going on in this Southwest African nation. Um, at this point, building a railway is pretty straightforward. The United States is basically invested in this project as one of its bigger overseas aid projects, and it's probably going to be completed and operational within a couple of years. Too little, too late. Time will tell. But the country is very much in play. And so, of course, Uncle Joe's going there.